everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So, it's just another week, another week gone by, um, and another week of working to get settled, and of course, another week of reading. So honestly, really not much going on this week, which I'm truly looking forward to. Clay and I have some um, you know, plans to kind of like hang out in general, but we did most of our unpacking last week. So this week we just have a few furniture deliveries coming in, but for the most part, we're just gonna be laying low, getting a normal routine, a normal schedule, which I cannot wait for. That being said, I have two books picked out, which I'm so looking forward to picking up. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about them. So the two books I have for this vlog are both, I feel like, very popular and very anticipated. The first one, which I am actually about to start like the next like 30 or so minutes, is A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. Frederick Bachman is a beloved author, and I hear this is a feel-good, possibly tear-jerking story about an old grumpy man kind of finding a new lease on life and befriending his new noisy neighbors. And I don't know, I just hope it's charming and will put a smile on my face. I have definitely been generally, I would say like out of my reading slump. I've I've been reading, but I'm still trying to read shorter books to kind of keep me motivated. Um, and I'm hoping this is a quick read just based on all of the positive reviews. I also am going to start reading Malibu Rising, which I'm actually going to listen to the audiobook of this. My goal is, let me flip you around. One of my goals is to play more Switch. So to accomplish, specifically, I want to beat Breath of the Wild. So one of the ways I feel like I'm going to do that and not feel guilty about not reading is listen to audiobooks whilst I play. I feel like that'll be like a peaceful, lovely way to unwind in the evening, light a candle, you know, play the beautiful game that is Breath of the Wild and listen to audiobooks. So I have the audiobook of this. I really enjoyed um, Daisy Jones and the Six and many of you guys said the audiobook for Malibu Rising was also really, really good. I'm curious to see if I like this. I feel like I've seen mixed things. Some people love it. Some people thought it was just okay. So we'll see where I fall on that spectrum, but nonetheless, looking forward to picking it up. Um, but yeah, those are the two books I hope to read for this vlog. I will definitely finish a Man Called Ove. I don't know if I'll finish Malibu Rising, but I'll definitely start it and at least have some feelings about it. But that's what's going on. I'm actually gonna go and read right now. So welcome to the vlog. Actually, in other news, I already bought a fall candle. It's really hot outside, but you know, that's not gonna stop us. So uh, also going to light a candle I have finished up work for the day, so I'm sneaking into the bedroom to do a spot of reading before prepping for dinner. Um, that's really all I have to tell you. So I'm gonna start this book now, give you guys an update in a bit. And then Clay and I are actually making salmon for dinner, so I think that should be ultra tasty, seeing where Matilda is. Millie, come on, let's go to the bedroom. Anyway, time to read. Hi. I'm about to start dinner now, but I read a quick, quick 50 pages of A Man Called Ove. And one, I feel like this is a book I'm going to read really quickly, but I would say two, it has immediately pulled me in. And I also feel like I'm gonna cry. Like I haven't cried yet, but I just get a feeling, a feeling down in my emotions that this is going to make me cry. Not that that is that difficult to be honest. Um, but A Man Called Ove so far, basically follows an old grumpy man who has kind of followed a routine and regimen his entire life. He was in charge of the homeowners association. He's worked the same job for years. He has lots of opinions about the internet, young people, and how the world is basically going to crap in his opinion. Um, at the beginning of the story, new neighbors move in next door. They're loud, they have multiple children. And this is a story really about him kind of getting a new lease on life, an old dog learning new tricks, and getting close with this family in like an unlikely way. Um, I would also say that Ove at the beginning of this book is kind of on the precipice of a lot of change. His job basically has forced him to retire. His wife recently passed away about six months prior. And I think you just get this feeling that he feels lost and he doesn't know what he's going to do with the rest of his time and he feels superfluous. And, um, and as a man who has kind of followed the same schedule, the same routine for so many years, 
it's definitely hard for him to try to embrace change. But I feel like that's the story we're gonna get. And first 50 pages, very, very engaging. Um, and I don't know, I just, I'm looking forward to this. And I stand by the statement of, I feel like it's going to make me cry. But I will plan to read more later tonight. Uh, but for now, I'm going to jump in the kitchen with Clay as we're making dinner. We're gonna watch more True Beauty tonight, which I'm so excited about. Um, and that's really it. Yeah. Prepped the potatoes, lemons for the salmon. And uh, we're also gonna make some broccoli. I'm just waiting for this water to boil then. And basically my job's done. <laughs> in other news, look at our new pot. We need to put a plant in there. But doesn't he just look so happy? I'm a big fan. We also got a new coffee maker. We're really, really settling in. What kind of dad joke were you about to make, Clay? I don't know. Okay. Just like that, dinner is done. I made so much mashed potatoes. I'm so nervous. Bon Moving on from True Beauty to an episode of Run BTS as we do in this household. And then I am gonna do more reading. Alrighty, Matilda and I have retreated. I'm gonna read more of A Man Called Ove. We'll see how far I get tonight. And I will check in with you guys tomorrow morning um, with how far I was able to get. Good night. Good morning, everyone. From my new mirror, hello, up and dressed. I did read to the 100 page mark of A Man Called Ove last night and actually, Let's sit down and talk about it because I'm emotional. So I read 100 pages of this book and I can definitely see why this book is so popular because Frederick Bachman's writing is just really good. Um, before I dive into thoughts, I do want to say a trigger warning for this book for suicide. Um, I just think that's important to call out, but this book is just charming, but also just is tinged with this like kind of sadness. Um, Ove as a main character is not perfect. In fact, he's rather problematic. He has antiquated views, he's angry, he's bitter, he's not nice to people around him. But Frederick Bachman places you so intimately in his life and I think combining with like present chapters of like the current pain and difficulty kind of adjusting that he's currently facing with seeing many chapters of his past and part of that too is kind of discussing his wife and I think for Ove for many years his wife was kind of like his heart his like physical embodiment of like the niceness in the world and when she was around that was enough and he didn't need to kind of have other human connection or think or care about people in that way because he could rely on his wife because she was so kind and so colorful and so bright in his life and he loved her so much and with the passing of his wife i think i mean for obvious reasons it's kind of just thrown his life emotionally upside down and now i think at least I just feel like this story is going to be him kind of figuring out how to care about other people and, and seeing him make relationships with other people that he otherwise prejudged or just has, you know, misconceptions about in his life. And I think it's going to hopefully change his life for the better. And also this book is just like about life, you know, about regrets. Um, like for example, there is a, a situation in this book where his arch nemesis, right? The person in his community that they've lived in the same community for like 30 years, kicked him off like the HOA. He calls the coupe de tet. I'm probably saying that wrong. But now it's like his, that man he's hated um, and they've kind of had this sense of rivalry together for 30 years has Alzheimer's and you know, can't leave his home, doesn't remember Ove, doesn't remember his wife. And I don't know, it's like something about that is just like so tragically sad and just kind of shows like the passing of time. I don't know, I, you can just see how I'm not articulating it very well, but like it was like a scene that just felt so powerful because it just had so many different layers to it. Um, and this book is just so good. Like Frederick Bachman's writing is just empathetic and you just feel so rooted in this life and you can see the flaws of this character, but you can also see the potential of this character too. And I definitely feel like I'm gonna cry. Like I teared up last night <laughs> multiple times. Um, I'm tearing up right now talking about it. Um, but anyway, I'm a third of the way done and it's really good and I'm looking forward to reading more today and finishing this book. I feel like it's not gonna be a problem at all as I'm really, really liking it. But just wanted to say hello, good morning. I'm dressed. 
ready to face the day and do some work. Um, but first I wanted to talk about a man called Ove. Time for a cup of coffee. And I'm also going to put on my Malibu Rising audiobook whilst I do some kind of like mindless tasks. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm gonna put that on now. Alrighty, I've listened to a solid two hours, my focus, not my focus, of Malibu Rising, which honestly, I don't really know where that puts me. I think about a sixth of the way through uh, this book. So far, I'm liking it. I wouldn't say it's like having captured my attention like Daisy Jones and the Six or the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, but, you know, I think the setting is cool, like the time period, and I'm hoping more family drama amps up. Um, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, so far so good. The narrator is really engaging. I think it's the same narrator as Educated, so I'm like very used to and comfortable with her voice. So the overall like experience of listening to an audiobook I've been really liking, and I really like how hands-free it is. It's nice to like have an audiobook on and do other stuff. Uh, and it's definitely something I'm going to continue to do, and I'm gonna listen more of Malibu Rising tonight um, whilst I play Breath of the Wild. I will say, structurally, I like how the book is written. It's basically taking place over the span of one day, and I think at the end of the day, um, there's this huge party, and this family's home burns down. Um, but in between the sort of chapters focusing on one specific day, we jump around to different family members who are all part of this like very well-known surfer family in Malibu. But we also jump backwards in time, you know, to get more context about the family in general. So structurally, I enjoy how the story is told. I just wouldn't say I'm totally sold into the narrative quite yet. Contrasting A Man Called Ove, which I was basically invested in, in that story immediately, which I also hear that book has a really good audiobook as well, though I'm really enjoying just reading it straight. Um, in other news, I picked up some flowers, so that's exciting. And uh, I got a bit more work I gotta get done right now, but I will check in in a bit. I think I'm gonna do a hair mask, face mask kind of night before I cook dinner and just relax. More of the same, more true beauty, you know what I mean? Face mask on, freshly laundered, um, starting dinner, which is just honestly a variety of sheet pans of food. So baked potatoes are going in first and then just some chicken and some corn. It's gonna be done in a snap, but yeah, these are ready to go in. Just wanted to say hello. <sighs> this face mask feels great. Jeep pan number two ready to go in. This is just corn wrapped up with some butter. And then I have some chicken breast with lemon pepper, garlic, salt, and cayenne. Make it spicy. Whoa, stepped on my bow. Ouch, Matilda, she's trying to kill me. Uh, um, anyway, this is gonna go in and everything will be now done in 30 minutes. Bon appetit. These potatoes are ginormous, but <laughs> it's like a triangle plate. They had potatoes in the store that were even larger called Texas size. Texas so size of baked potatoes? We could go even, we could go even Bigger. farther. Anyway, it's time for True Beauty. Dinner is consumed and we're now about to sit down and watch some True Beauty. Great thing about sheet pan meals is I actually was able to read um, another 50 pages of A Man Called Ove. So I think I'm about halfway through this book. I also cried while reading these 50 pages, waiting for my chicken to finish cooking. There was me on the couch, just shedding a tear, shedding a tear. Um, so now that's twice I've cried reading this book. It's just, it it's touched my heart. Uh, but anyway, it's time for True Beauty. What are your thoughts on True Beauty, Clay? I've liked it a lot so far. It's fun, right? Mm -hmm. What team are you on? Suho? Edward. <laughs> no, really, are you, what team, team are you Suho. on? Suho. He just, he's having a hard time. Um, it's just so fun and funny. So we're gonna watch another episode of that. Uh, maybe two, we have time for a couple. Um, I'll probably do more reading tonight. And that's, that's really it. My arm's getting tired, I won't lie. <laughs> um, but yeah, time to watch TV, but uh, we'll check in in a bit. If you're yeah. ever wondering if Matilda liked hanging out with us, the answer is no. She'd much rather just be in her room. Millie. I yeah. love you. <laughs> Many hours of true beauty later, I'm now going to do for reading and then honestly go to sleep. Um, I really just want to say that. I love True Beauty. If you haven't watched it, it is such a joy to watch. It's just funny and endearing and cute. 
and you just love all the characters and it's just I don't know it's just adorable and I love it and uh, it's like very good escapism you know you know what I mean so I would highly recommend it especially if you're new to k-dramas if you've never seen one before Chloe true beauty both fantastic options but now it's time for me to get back to crying while reading a man called Ove so I'm gonna do that now good morning I'm reading this fucking cry <laughs> I've been crying the whole time. <laughs> why is this book making- Oh, I know why this book's making me cry every time I pick it up. It's so good. <laughs> up and at him in my overalls. Clay and I are actually headed out on an early lunch adventure. He's also working from the desk today, but I just wanted to show you my OOTD. Also, I read <laughs> 50 more pages of A Man Called Ove this morning. I have about 100 pages left and I checked how far I listened to of Malibu Rising for my audiobook, which was 60 pages. So I've read just about 300 pages so far. I definitely feel like I'm gonna be able to finish A Man Called Ove today. It's just so good. I, when I pick it up, it's so hard to put down. So I have high hopes for that, but I gotta go because Clay's waiting for me and I'll explain where we're going in the car. Clay and I are taking a bit of a drive for a lunch adventure. We're going to a place called Valentina's, which is like a barbecue food truck in South Austin. It's one of my favorite tacos I've ever had. So I've been thinking about it, dreaming about it, wanting it since we've been back. It's crazy busy on the weekend, so we thought we would venture down on a weekday and try our luck. Um, but there still might be a line, but we, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to get some brisket tacos. I can't wait. We've arrived. Time for some brisket tacos. I almost forgot to vlog. Look at these. Brisket tacos. Thing of beauty. Um, I wanted to check in because I've done more reading. I only have about 70 pages left of this book. I'm flying through it. I cannot put it down. And I just keep crying. <laughs> I just keep crying. Like, pick up this book if you want a good tear session because it's gonna freaking happen. There's like so much I could say and yet I feel completely inarticulate and I'm actually gonna give myself a break. I'm gonna switch over to Malibu Rising and listen to the audiobook because like I feel like I need to be in the right headspace to finish this book because in so many ways it's just like so beautiful. Like first and foremost, Ove's love for his wife. I just about now it's literally like the up scenario you know what i mean just like him thinking about all the mo like he is a very difficult person and she is like a shining star and their compatibility like them together is so beautiful and he loves her so much and you just see and you feel that love in your heart like every time he talks about her oh my god and then seeing him in the present day like trying to have life without her is just a lot for him but also seeing him kind of i guess open himself up to community again and the thing is ove isn't really changing per se which i think is actually a really interesting approach because ove in a lot of ways he's a finicky man he's a difficult man but he's like a hard-working man and he's very fair like he will go to war with the city council um you know for changing the color paint on the road but he will also go to war with city council to get a proper ramp built for people who need access or i don't know like he is he'll also like help a kid repair his bike like i don't know he shows his compassion and how he cares just in a different way than everyone else and seeing him allow himself to be part of society slowly is amazing and how he like shows that he cares you just get you just get become so in tuned with his character and i just love it <laughs> just love it and i'm just crying all of the time um uh, but i'm now gonna switch over to malibu rising which i almost feel like it's unfair to read malibu rising parallels with this book because this is probably gonna be like one of my new favorite books of all time to be honest and like I'm gonna forcibly make Clay read this book immediately after I finish it because I feel like he would just love it. And like while I'm liking Malibu Rising, it's just like not even in the same arena in terms of enjoyment for me. It is interesting and I'm hoping Malibu Rising begins to pick, 
pick up but like it's interesting too because both of these books utilize like flashbacks as a way to become like more rooted and emotionally connected to the characters and while i just feel like i live and breathe ove's life malibu rising i'm like interested by all the players but i wouldn't say i feel deeply connected to anyone but regardless i'm like i think once the plot begins to heat up it'll become more entertaining um and these books are completely non-comparable like plot wise they're not similar in the slightest but i just feel like i'm so invested in one and like only a little bit invested in the other if that makes sense but i am gonna put it on now do some cleaning i think get settled we have evening plans with some friends so i don't know if i'll be able to do more reading tonight but i mean i've read almost like 350 pages now at this point um and i'll have no issue finishing this book maybe tonight but if not tomorrow i only have about 70 pages left so it should be actually i have less i have about 60 pages left so it should be very easy and then we'll just see how far i get on my audiobook which i feel like audiobooks fly by i'm like i feel like i'm about to have like an audiobook renaissance um i also test drove playing my audiobook playing some video games yesterday and it went wonderfully so i feel like it's like definitely a two birds one stone scenario so anyway i'm rambling now but just have to talk i just have to sing my praises for this book <laughs> singing them forever about to head out to get dinner with some friends i wanted to show off my outfit i feel like an extra on the little house on the prairie um, i'm not sure i'll vlog whilst we're eating but i'll check you guys later tonight and I'm definitely on track to finishing my book. Oh, hello, Matilda. I'm wearing my RJ socks too. <laughs> um, and I will listen more to my audiobook tomorrow and more True, true Beauty. <sighs> Love it. Good morning, everyone. Time for a nice cup of coffee to get the day started. Well, this is actually my second cup of coffee, but I guess I didn't need to tell you that. <laughs> Hello, it's me. I'm dressed for the day. Clay's working on a really important presentation and I promised I wouldn't bother him. So after I just show you my cute dress, I'm gonna leave now. But in other news, I'm actually about to start making lunch. I actually really read, hold on, a little better? I made the same lunch earlier this week, so I'm hoping I do a better job, but I'm just compressing some tofu because I'm going to pan, like fry it a bit. Uh, I'm making some spring rolls, which I've watched so many YouTube videos this morning, of all well, a few, um, on how to get a better spring roll roll. But I'm putting just like tofu, lettuce, like some veggies, and I made like a homemade peanut sauce earlier this week. So I'm just gonna assemble that and hope, and hope my rolls are a little more, uh, they hold together a bit better this time around, but nonetheless, they were delicious when I made them. So even if they fall apart, I'm still looking forward to it. But step one is just compressing the tofu so it's easier to pan fry. All right, after weighting down my tofu, I'm now just kind of pan frying it in some sesame oil. I honestly feel like there's nothing on the planet that smells better than sesame oil, which is my opinion. And while that fries, I'm gonna chop up my veggies, which is just some cucumbers and those are carrots this is a cucumber and then i'm just filling them with lettuce and then that's my peanut sauce and i'm also gonna cook the tofu in this peanut sauce after they get a little crispy the tofu only takes about 30 30 three minutes on each side and then once this side finished cooking i'm gonna just put a dollop of my homemade peanut sauce that i made a couple days ago in there and then so begins construction i have my little matchsticks i have my lettuce um the matchsticks of vegetables can't speak today the construction is definitely the hardest part <laughs> So wish me luck. All right, everything is ready for assembly. And now I just need to assemble. So crossing my fingers. <laughs> So 
not restaurant quality, but better, better. I think part of my issue is I'm overstuffing them, which is just hard because I just, it, it tastes good. I finished my spring rolls and I'm gonna take 20 more minutes on my lunch to finish A Man Called Ove because I have so little of this book left and I must see how it ends. Um, I definitely love this book and I feel like I'm gonna be reading many more Frederick Bachman books this year. But for now, I'm gonna finish this. Stepping into the bedroom because Clay is eating in the kitchen. But I finished A Man Called Ove and if you're wondering if I cried again, the answer is yes, I did cry again finishing this book. Honestly, this book was just like so heartwarming and beautiful and emotionally impacted me in a way that I don't even know if I can like objectively rate this book because it's just been, I don't know, like so beautiful. I guess you could say because it's made me cry and I feel so connected to these characters, you could say like probably deserves whatever rating I give it. But point is, wow, Frederick Bachman's character work. Oh my God, the story was just so heartwarming and I thought it would be and it was and I cried so many times reading this book. Oh gosh. Anyway, I loved it. Um, I'm gonna listen to more Malibu Rising today and tomorrow. I'll probably read a bit of it too now that I finished A Man Called Ove, so I'll probably switch now between the audiobook and the physical book, but <laughs> I love this book so much. I haven't cried this much throughout a book like reading experience in years. Like I was crying throughout the entire thing. One big old tear fest. I have finished up work and I have just been playing Breath of the Wild and listening to my audiobook. And I just checked. Um, I've just passed the 120 page mark. And I would say this book is starting to grow on me. I think it's really interesting. Structurally, I really enjoy how it's told. Um, I think it's interesting how it's pairing this sort of like countdown to the party hour by hour with kind of going through the entire family's like life um, throughout the year, starting with like when their parents got together um, up and through like their childhood, which is where I'm kind of at now, which I think will provide a lot of juicy context for whatever is about to happen at the party. But 120 pages read, I also finished A Man Called Ove, which means 450 pages read. And that has felt like a breezy 450 pages, but Millie and I are about to start dinner, which honestly I'll probably keep listening to the audiobook and then I'll probably play a little bit more. I keep dying, which is stressful. I have so much of this game left. I just feel like I'm failing this game all the time, but I'm still having a good time, but I just feel like I'm doing stuff wrong. Like my armor feels weak, my weapons keep breaking all of the time, forever and always. Anywho, time to make dinner. Listening to my audiobook, about to put Round two of the oven in, potatoes already in the oven. It's another chicken kind of night, you know? Roasted corn, huzzah. I'm also wearing my in the soup sweatshirt again. <laughs> and dinner is done, but absolutely so hot. I gotta let it cool. There's like a, f too much tin foil. That's all I gotta say. Dinner was delicious. And I have listened to over 150 pages of Malibu Rising. I've almost read 500 pages. And I have to say, listening to audiobooks and playing Breath of the Wild is my new favorite way to pass time. I feel like I kind of have like a, I have a hard time like paying attention to one thing. So the multitask element of it makes the whole thing so much fun. Like I've always liked playing Breath of the Wild, but like it would lose my attention, but now it's like so relaxing playing it while listening to an audiobook. And on the topic of the audiobook, Malibu Rising, I'm actually getting pretty invested in the story, which I'm happy to say. I think going into it, I wasn't expect, I don't know why, it doesn't make sense. I wasn't expecting it to be so kind of character driven and emotional. I thought this was gonna be more like glamorous family, falls apart, dramatic ending, how did we get there kind of thing. And while there's a lot of dramatic things that have happened in these, you know, kids' lives, these adults' lives, it's a lot more emotional and a lot more human than I was anticipating. And I think that will make the overall impact of this party that it's like, we're kind of leading up to this party all the more explosive possibly, but I don't know, seeing their life and their childhood and 
kind of the different roles each child kind of filled to deal with you know various elements of their traumatic childhood and it's it's just I feel like it's done with a lot of humanity and I guess I should expect that with Taylor Jenkins reads because I do feel like she makes very interesting characters ones that feel so glamorous and untouchable but yet so fragile at the same time and I feel like we really get that with Malibu Rising and I just read a very devastating chapter and it like I was listening to it while eating dinner and I'm like this is kind of a lot right now it was a 1975 chapter if anyone else has read it but it's definitely growing on me and I'm getting much more attached to the story and I'm getting really into this audiobook too I love the narrator and I just feel like this particular activity video games and audiobooks is I think um, how I'm going to spend at least the next six months of my life I think it's fantastic fantastic so if you have any good audiobook recommendations let me know down below I don't really love listening to fantasy on audio but I love fic like general fiction, not that. And then nonfiction, I think I wanna check out some more memoirs and stuff, but I have been really, really liking this whole vibe. So I think I'm gonna do it some more. <laughs> I meant to show you guys this earlier, but we had a delivery of our new rug and there's only two of us and furniture that we have to move to lay it down, so. We're gonna see if we're strong enough right now. Matilda is not gonna help even in the slightest. Okay, wait, I'm so impressed with us. We laid down our new rug. Look at this eight by 10 beauty. And if you're curious where Matilda is, she's right here. She's really thrilled about her new under bed carpet. <laughs> but look how cozy this room is now. We just need our nightstands some lamps, I'm using the living room lamp currently, and we'll be all set. But Matilda is a big fan. I'm gonna play some more Breath of the Wild, and I think I'm gonna watch the new episode of MTV The Challenge. But I've done so much reading today, and over the past four days, 500 pages, I feel like it's been a minute since I've had such a productive time. So uh, time to do some more relaxing and go to sleep. Good morning, friends. Happy Friday, up and dressed. Getting some work done this morning. I also feel just generally productive for this vlog because I've already read 500 pages, so cheers. I hope to listen to more at Malibu Rising at lunch. Um, and that's kind of all I got so far, so cheers, hello. There's Clay doing his morning paces. And Matilda continually not hanging out with us. Isn't that right, Millie? Anyway, cheers, happy Friday. About to put this on while I get some work done. I've almost listened to half this audiobook, I wanna say. That's all right, Clay. And uh, as I said last night, it's growing on me and Matilda and I are getting very invested in this story. Alrighty, world, it's that time of day. Let's construct a salad together for lunch. I already have some eggs on to boil. And this morning, I did make a homemade honey Dijon vinaigrette. Very tasty, but now I'm just gonna cut up a bunch of stuff to throw into a bowl and eat. Salad is constructed. Now I just have to dump in the dressing and the eggs. We're all good. Just some butter lettuce, radish, some red onion, and some corn. And feta, we're good to go. And a bon appetit, everyone. Tasty. Hello, friends. Ignore the laundry, which is currently running in the background, but finish that salad. It honestly was delicious. And I thought it might be a good time to actually end this vlog mostly because I'm about to start a, another vlog directly after this. But I'm actually so pleased with the amount I was able to read this week. I read 540 pages, which is definitely higher than average. And I definitely say it's because I read two books that I found to be incredibly engaging um, and audiobooks. So it was just an overall win. Um, obviously the primary book I read for this vlog was a Man Called Ove, I read this entire thing. I really, really, really enjoyed it and I will definitely be reading more Frederick Bachman books in the future. It was just endearing and lovely and just heartwarming 
and yeah it definitely made me cry a whole bunch so really really loved this and then I have read over 200 pages now of Malibu Rising with the audiobook which I'm also really liking I feel like I went into this book with expectations and even the book kind of sets you up to have certain expectations in the beginning but I do feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid makes the characters a lot more dynamic and interesting and overall makes the story a lot more heartfelt than I was expecting and the sibling relationships are complicated but there's so much love there versus going into this book I was really anticipating it being like a toxic family takedown whereas it's really not the vibe at all it is still fascinating and just kind of seeing all the different perspectives as well as kind of following these kids throughout their entire life um, has been really great so far and I'm gonna continue to listen to the audiobook throughout this weekend and probably finish it in the next couple of days um, as it's honestly hard to put down um, especially with the audiobook it's just so 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 engaging but yeah overall I would say very successful reading week and really am liking both stories and yeah I hope you guys enjoy this reading vlog and I will see you soon with another one soon